Hey guys, Sav here, back with some more Let's Replay Guild Wars 2. Uh, just a short update on myself here. Uh, I've unfortunately taking, have taken about a week and a half or so off of recording uh, due to a cold in the cough that I've been dealing with. And as you can tell by my voice, still not 100% over it, uh, but I've fallen, unfortunately, pretty far behind uh, my normal recording schedule here. And I need to catch up. Um, at the end of my last video, I got a mail... Uh, which is actually oddly account wide. I have it on all my characters. Um, from Magister Ella Mc, uh, McKay. <clears throat> it's specifically for for uh, this character, Carrie. Uh, I do find it strange that all my characters have this mail, though, but they do. Uh, so I'm just going to read it for you. Then we're going to go do the Season 1 recap over here at the star. And then we will actually start uh, next video with uh, Season 2. Of uh, the living story, which kind of makes me regret a little bit that I went ahead and uh, got the Herald specialization. I wasn't intending on doing a uh, season two story, but uh, at some point I decided I was going to do it. So it's a little out of order, but it's fine. It's it, it's a good reflection of anybody who's playing for for anybody who's playing today. You can kind of just do any of this stuff in any order that you want. Uh, but anyway, it says uh, history lesson: carry the cat. Uh, we have a saying at the Dermot Priory, remember the past so you may shape the future. With that in mind, I've been conducting interviews and collecting historical information on Scott, Scarlet Briar and her war against Tyrius starting in 8, 1326 AE. And for the record, I do believe we are now currently in 13... I don't know, it says the final attack was in 1327. I'll keep reading. I've prepared a summary of my research for you. It covers the major events of her campaign leading up to the final attack on Lion's Arch in 1327. Mm -hmm. Meet me in Lion's Arch when you can. I'll be waiting sincerely. Magister Ella Mc McKay. And then underneath of it is a message from ArenaNet. It says, Living World Season 1 was a series of live content events that ran from January 2013 to March 2014. It chronicled Scarlet Briar's War on Tyria, culminating in the destruction of Old Lion's Arch and the awakening of, of a powerful entity. The story was designed to be experienced as it happened. It is currently unavailable, unavailable for episodic replay like Season 2, so we've created a recap to inform you of the events that, that bridge the gap between the end of the personal story, circa 1325 AE, and the Living World Season 2, 1327 AE. Uh, after completing this summary, you should have all of the necessary information to jump in in and begin playing Little World Season 2 and all subsequent story content which is accessible from the story journal. Uh, in fairness, and before we even get into it, um, this is a fairly minor recap. There is a very, if you want a really, really like in-depth, uh, almost movie-like, full-length feature recap, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, maybe I'll put a link in the description below of that video. Um, I hope you have some time on your hands. It's a long watch, uh, but it definitely goes over season two a lot more, more, a lot better, and a lot more than this is going to. Every day is a good day to learn something. All right, this is supposed to be voiceover. So let me skip the end and try again. Uh, there was a bit of a problem there. That was supposed to be voiceovered, and it wasn't. So I'm going to try to watch it again. Uh, but I did get the, you know, I did finish it, so I just wanted to show you guys that. Because I skipped to the end. <laughs> uh, it was kind of stupid for me to sit there and watch it with no voiceover, so we're going to replay cinematic. Hopefully there's a voiceover this time. I don't know where the voiceover is. There's definitely supposed to be a voiceover. Okay, so this isn't something I would normally do on my channel, but I'm going to go ahead and play the, my original video of the voiceover. Since the voiceover doesn't seem to be working, because I think this is at least fairly important uh, for you guys to see. So, here we go. This is uh, episode 152 of my uh, original Let's Play. Scarlet Briar. Where should I begin? No one at first knew why she began her reign of terror. Some say she peered into the very fabric of the universe and went insane. Her attacks began in the Northeast and spread like fire. She formed uneasy alliances and controlled her minions through deception and brutality. She leveraged their technology to scan for currents of magical energy called ley lines. Each attack had a purpose, allowing her to collect data from across Tyria that would later be used to assault Lion's Arch.
When all hope seemed lost, the heroes of Tyria rose to the task, along with new allies. Bram Arison of Cragstead. Rox Whetstone, Gladium. Casimir Mead, Mesmer. Marjorie Delacroix, Investigator. And Tymie, Prodigy from Radasum. Led by the Pact Commander, they dismantled Scarlet's operations. But while they reclaimed the city at the Battle of Lion's Arch, they would later discover that she had completed her mission, even in death. Scarlet's machine struck the ley line deep beneath Sanctum Harbor, directing its magic far into the Maguma jungle. Changing the course of history. Alright, so that was my old uh, Let's Play video. Let's get that out of here. And here we are back live in Guild Wars 2 with Carry the Cat, and we'll go over some of, uh, <clears throat> I believe these are voice. Marjorie Delacroix is a necromancer from Divinity's Reach. Until recently, she was a member of the Ministry Guard of Divinity's Reach, and was responsible for protecting various Crichton ministers and their staff. She quit that job after witnessing some terrible abuses of power. After she left the Guard, she went into business as an investigator for hire, taking on various cases that her clients needed handled, often with discretion. When Scarlet's Aetherblades assassinated Theo Ashford of the Captain's Council, Marjorie led the inquiry that led to the arrest of their leader, Captain Mai Trin. Trin later escaped her cell and fled to the Mists, shortly before Scarlet's attack on Lion's Arch. Miss Delacroix would later help destroy the Tower of Nightmares in Kessex Hills, along with Lady Casimir Mead and the Pact Commander, who led the mission. Through her connections as a Durman Priory member, she obtained evidence samples left behind by Scarlet's forces. The Pact Commander, with Marjorie's help and that of Casimir and Vorp, predicted the attack on Lion's Arch. Despite their warnings to the Captain's Council, the city fell, but it was later reclaimed. It's a pleasure to see you. Uh, that was, by the way, about Marjorie. I didn't say that. And this is going to be uh, about Casimir. This is what can you tell me about Casimir Mead? Lady Casimir Mead comes from noble stock. But her family has since fallen on hard times. Her gambling brother Kyle put the family deep into debt, forcing her father to liquidate their possessions. Despite his efforts to fix Kyle's mistakes and unable to pay his own bills, her father was thrown into prison, where he died. Casimir, now forced to work, found employment as an investigator with Marjorie Delacroix. Their combined efforts, with the Pact Commander's help, led to the solving of Theo Ashford's murder during Dragon Bat. Casimir was instrumental in uncloaking the Nightmare Tower, as well as in other battles during Scarlet's campaign. She distracted Scarlet in the final battle on the Breachmaker, giving the Pact Commander a chance to deal the death blow. Uh, I'm curious about Rox. Rox is a Gladium. She lost her entire warband in a mining explosion. Since then, she performed tasks for Ritlock Brimstone, the Blood Legion Tribune in an effort to join his stone warband. She crossed paths with Bram at the Molten Alliance facility. Together, under the leadership of the Pact Commander, they infiltrated the weapons base, freed the prisoners, and destroyed that operation. Throughout Scarlet's campaign, Rox fought beside the Pact Commander, providing ranged support and healing the injured. She accompanied the strike team that led the assault on Scarlet's Breachmaker in Lion's Arch. When Bram broke his leg during the fight, Rox stayed behind to tend to him, she also revived Marjorie Delacroix, who was wounded by Scarlet's blast. Intending to her friends, she forfeited her opportunity to kill Scarlet, leaving the Pact Commander to do the honors. This was in direct conflict to her orders, and it ultimately led to her not gaining membership in the Stone Warband. What do you know about Bram Arison? Bram Arison hails from Cragstead, a sizable homestead in Wayfarer foothills. He's the son of Aristogalkin and Borgia the Sun Chaser. As a child, he never knew his mother. She and Borgia parted amicably so she could forge her legend with Destiny's Edge. Bram's father, a hero in his own right, agreed to raise Bram to adulthood. Unfortunately, that wasn't meant to be. Borgia died when his son was a young boy. In the care of friends, Bram grew into an impetuous teen. He has a reputation for being a bit impulsive, but his heart's in the right place, or so I'm told. When the Molten Alliance swept through Nornlands, 
Bram saw the violence firsthand. He sought help from the Charred, the Black Citadel, but was turned away. Tribune Brimstone had no troops to spare, and he didn't believe the claims that Bram was the son of his guildmate. Undeterred, Bram approached Newt Whitebear in the hopes of gathering Norn to fight back the invaders. Again, he was denied, as the sons of Svanir were perceived as the bigger threat to Holbrek. Bram ultimately teamed up with Rox Whetstone, a Chargladian who had fought the Molten Alliance at Nolan Hatchery. Together, and with the aid of the Pact Commander, they infiltrated the Molten Alliance weapons facility and destroyed it from the inside. Bram was involved in a number of operations against Scarlet. He joined the Pact Commander in the final assault on the Breachmaker, but he broke his leg in the process. Ah, oh. if you guys know anything about me and my channel, you know I hate Timey, but here's some details on her. Ah, Timey. Rarely have I seen so much intellect and attitude crammed into such a tiny body. But don't let her size fool you. Between her feisty attitude and her skill at Golomancy, let's just say you wouldn't want to get on her bad side. She comes from Radasun, though her studies have taken her abroad. She first came to my attention when Scarlet's marionette was stomping around. Her obsession with Scarlet's research led to some crucial discoveries. When she speaks about magic, especially that of Elder Dragons, you'd best listen. <clears throat> um, are there any recent occurrences I should be aware of? And this final one is about a load stand. It used to be a current event. Or actually, this might even be a current event. Yeah, that's a current event, too. It's a current event you can do. I'm not doing the current events. Uh, I mean, I might do, I've done them before. There's no point in doing them in a Let's Play. Um, they really don't have much to do with the story. Uh, they're kind of more side stories th than anything. Uh, it gives you a little bit more maybe in-depth into like stuff like ley lines and the anomalies of ley lines. Uh, but it's not really important for a Let's Play. Uh, just a couple things to go over real quick. I will link to the... Uh, I'll have two links in the description below. My original Let's Play, the uh, episode 152 that I actually put into this video uh, to show you guys the cutscene since the cutscene was not voiced over for whatever reason uh, today. Uh, and I will also put in, uh, like I said, it's like a, I want to say it might be even four hours. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, the movie of Let of Living World season one. Um, it's a good watch if you're interested in season one. Everything she kind of said obviously is true. It's you know it's it gives you good backstory on the characters we're going to be dealing with going forward. Uh, there's going to be a lot of talk about Scarlet, so it's good that we had the, the, you know a good in depth talk about Scarlet. And obviously all the, the new allies that we have, because they're going to be all over Living World Season 2 and going forward. And it's good to have some backstory on them. However, it, it really glossed over a lot of things, like the Marionette fight, the Molten Alliance, the Toxic Alliance, you know, the Nightmare Tree, all that stuff. Which, in the grand scheme of things, are probably minor things, um, because they were all just part of Scarlet's armies and whatever. Um... But it's kind of a shame that they kind of glossed over it. Uh, because it was a big part of Living World Season 1. Um, however, a lot of that stuff is now in the Fractals. Uh, the My Train fight is in the Fractals. Uh, I have reworked, I don't think it's exactly the same, but a reworked uh, version of the Night Tree called the Nightmare Fractal is in, um, is in the Fractals. Um, the Molten uh, Boss fight or what's is, I forget exactly what it's called I think it's called Molten Boss maybe it's Molten Duo uh, it takes you it as, as, since it's been updated by the way it takes you through even more of the dungeon it used to be just the boss battle but now it actually takes you through even more of the dungeon there's the weapon test facility which I believe is called Molten I actually don't even remember what it's called but there's the weapon test facility fractal which I believe is actually part of the same dungeon that the uh, Molten Duo was a part of um, or it might be a separate dungeon I actually don't know um, so there's a lot of stuff in the fractals that you can actually uh, update yourself on Living World Season 1 with. Uh, but anyway, that's it for this video, guys. We're going to start Living World Season 2 in the next video, and it will be in Brisbane Wildlands, where strange things are happening. And we'll have a mail, which I'll read then. See you guys then. Thanks for watching.